Yes. And uh, here's how I intend to do that if I can uh, convince enough of my colleagues in Congress to move in that direction. It shouldn't be too hard. In the first three or four years, this bill is going to be largely, uh, this program is going to be standing up. They're going to be hiring those 16,000 IRS agents we talked about that are so important to our health care. They're going to be putting together 100 new agencies, uh, a bureaucracy capable of handling a trillion dollars. They're going to be building it up. Well, that takes funds. It takes a lot of money to, uh, to set something like that up. And if we can get control of the House of Representatives, and when I say we, I mean fiscally minded Republicans and independents and even Democrats, we can stop the funding of the bill. At the same time, of course, we're putting forward our positive solutions for health care reform. Because we always have to have positive alternatives that we're serious, serious about and sincere about making into law. But uh, at some point, it will be possible to repeal it if we're, if we're successful in defunding the implementation of it. Because once that thing gets implemented, it'll be nearly impossible to get rid of. Uh, what did Ronald Reagan say about uh, the government program? It's the closest thing to eternal life on Earth. If that thing comes into place by 2013, even with a Republican in the White House, it may be too difficult to get rid of it politically for some people. So I'd say let's stop this thing before it can get to that maturity. Let's defund the implementation section of it, but at the same time, make darn sure they're putting forward positive alternatives that can pass into law. We do need health care reforms. We need them badly because if we don't get them, we're not going to be able to afford health care for much longer. So uh, it's a very important issue. Yes, in fact, we just sent another my third op-ed on the subject uh, to the newspapers today. I'm going to be very vocal about it. And uh, Chris Murphy, who sat on the subcommittee, the health care subcommittee, where this bill initially went through, uh, and who called its passage in the House of Representatives electric uh, when it went into law, uh, has a lot of answering to the people in the 5th District. He's got, he's got a lot of explaining to do, and we're going to hold him accountable. As a follow-up to that, from a former candidate to a present candidate, you are a Republican in a new state. Connecticut specifically is down near the insurance capital of the planet, and all of the health insurance companies are going to be hiring in order to handle all of the increased workload of this legislation. You as a candidate in a room full of voters who may be getting new jobs because of this health care bill, how are you going to tell them that it will be good for them for you to repeal this legislation and cost them their new jobs? In the long run, and I don't even mean the long run here, two or three years out, this bill is going to be as destructive to the insurance community as anything else. They will not be spared from the effects of this bill, which is going to be economic stagnation and essentially an inability to pay these medical bills. The insurance companies right now are only making one or two percent, one to two percent profit on managing this system. But what's going to happen when the government decides it can't afford the system that it put into place. Well, it's going to make that 1 or 2 percent, 0.1 percent, or 0.01 percent, and pretty soon, 0 percent. So, if, if the insurance community wants to remain a part of the free market, uh, it's going to have to, I think, at some stage make a decision that this bill is bad, not just for the nation, for consumers, and for doctors and medical professionals, but for itself. Unfortunately, too many have not come to that determination yet. I think that's because they're looking at short-term gains by hire. But make no mistake that you can't have a government-run system, a government-run health care system, with a private implementation program of this size and have it work uh, in any, any type of uh, sane and profitable way.
But as you pointed out just a few minutes ago, uh, companies have to make their decisions based on what they expect to happen. And as you also just said a few minutes ago, this thing actually goes through and is implemented. It would be hard to remove. So right now, a lot, most of the insurance companies are shifting their structure. They don't need sales and marketing anymore because everybody has to have insurance now. But they are increasing their number of people who will be processing the claims. Right. So you're going to be talking to a lot of people who just got jobs that they've been waiting for for over a year, and you're going to fire them. No, I don't think that's going to happen because the benefits of this plan don't come to, into effect for four years. And we have time in that four-year period to turn this thing around, to stop the implementation of the bill, and to go with real, workable health care solutions. Now, that's, that's their bill. Their bill uh, is only, only looks like it's profitable or deficit neutral because they have 10 years of taxation with six years of, of benefits. Uh, so those benefits will be another will be another four years before those go into effect and those insurance jobs are theoretically created. Last attempt. You are going to be talking to people who suppose you want. How will you convince them that repealing this and losing those jobs will be good for them? Because a good job over 30 years is a much better option than a good job for one or two years before the system collapses. Thank you. Just on immigration, how do, you, how do you think federal government should handle the immigration problem? The illegal immigration? We already have the laws we need on the books. Uh, we need to execute them, and we need to follow through on the letter of the law. That's all that needs to be done in order to bring insurance, or not insurance, immigration reform to the United States. Uh, we also need to, of course, protect our borders, make sure they're not porous. But uh, everything we need to do is right before us. Uh, we have a Congress, though, in the White House that doesn't want to execute these laws. Uh, Congress looks the other way. The White House, Republican and Democrat, have ignored the problem, problems of illegal immigration. Uh, and that's because uh, I think they've got they don't have their heart in it. They don't want to actually enforce the law. They want to pick and choose which laws to enforce. All right, Justin, what role do you feel that federal government should play in education? Well, can they get themselves out of the way a little bit so that uh, the states and the locals could uh, take care of education? I believe education is largely a local issue. It needs to return to that. The federal government's taking plenty of money from the states and the towns in the name of education. Very little of it comes back. Uh, I don't believe the No Child Left Behind program is the way to go. Uh, we need to let the locals, municipalities, handle education. We've got a tremendous uh, tradition of education in the state, in this region. And uh, frankly, I think we endanger it when uh, we get the federal government involved. Now, there may be problem spots around the country where the federal government can lend a hand, but uh, I think in general, this needs to be a local issue, and uh, I'll, I'll end it there.